Hello and welcome to another episode of the Muslim Scholar's Perspective on Human Rights. My name is Zainab Malakuti and I'm an Assistant Professor of Human Rights. Today my guest is Dr. Simai Saraf. He is an Associate Professor at Shahid Beishi University in Tehran. He has a doctorate in private law and studied and graduated from Qom Seminary. He has dozens of articles and books in religious, jurisprudential, and legal fields. His favorite research areas are religion, Islamic law, human rights, and philosophy. Today I'm going to discuss the issue of pluralism with him. In fact, pluralism encourages the acceptance of all religions within society. It encompasses the belief that all people can coexist together in order to create an inclusive community. It fosters an environment in which individuals are free to practice their faith. In this regard, I am going to ask Dr. Simai that does Islam recognize other religions? If so, their followers have freedom of belief and practice or not? Thank you so much for following us. Hello and welcome Dr. Simai to this episode of the Muslim Scholar's Perspective on Human Rights. And thank you for accepting our invitation to speak about pluralism in Islam and acceptance of other religions. My first question to you is that what is the Islamic perspective on the various religions and denominations that exist in the world? Does Islam recognize them? And do their followers have freedom of belief and practice? Thank you for inviting me. To answer this question, <clears throat> first I will present the views of some Islamic jurists and then explain the Quranic perspective and the views of contemporary Islamic thinkers. According to some Islamic jurists, a distinction should be made between the Abrahamic religions such as Christianity and Judaism and other religions. The Abrahamic religions are recognized and their followers are privileged to have freedom of belief and practice. They can have their own religion and are not required to change their beliefs and become Muslim. However, some extremist jurists believe other religions are not acceptable and their followers must be fought against to change their beliefs. Uh, thank you so much. In this case, do acts of terrorism and group violence by Islamist extremists, who we refer to as Salafis and radical Muslims, have their roots in their jurisprudential ideas and should they be blamed? No. Unfortunately, this group of Muslims, who are now referred to as ISIS, Taliban, Al-Qaeda, etc., and have caused Islamophobia, have misused the concept of jihad in order to gain political power and have devastated the image of Islam. There are some reasons supporting my idea. First, radical Islamists believe in eliminating those who are not like them, whether Muslim or non-Muslim. This is why ISIS started to fight against Muslim in Iraq and Syria for several years. Second, they do not differentiate between Abrahamic and non-Abrahamic religions. They fight against everyone who does not believe in their beliefs. So we can observe terrorist attacks that took place in Europe and United States as killing Christians and Jews, and those which took place in Middle East as killing Muslims. Third, those jurists who believe in war against non-Abrahamic religions have special terms and conditions for this war. However, radical Muslims do not believe in these conditions at all. And the most significant issue is that the Shia school of thought which has many followers in Iran, Iraq, and Lebanon, fundamentally does not consider the initial jihad, 
which is the war to change beliefs permissible during the occultation era of divine leader. Shia Muslims believe in tolerance and coexistence with other religions. Therefore, you never find any Shia jihadists or terrorist group among the violent and terrorist groups. Uh, thank you so much. From your explanations, it seems that some Islamic jurists and thinkers recognize and consider all religions and denominations to be valid. Can you provide further explanation about this perspective and tell us which perspective you prefer? Yes. Some Islamic thinkers recognize all religions, whether Christianity, Judaism, or other religions. They believe in freedom of belief and practice for, for all religions, and I doubtedly prefer the second perspective. Uh, thank you. What are the reasons for this perspective? Why do you and other Islamic intellectuals believe in this view? These Islamic thinkers among both Sunni and Shia communities recognize and respect all religions and denominations based on numerous Quranic verses and hadith. Considering our limiting, limited time, I can briefly mention some of these reasons, and for further research, interested ones can refer to books and articles published on this topic. First, all Quranic verses consider fighting only necessary against hostile enemies and prohibit initiating in a war in order to change beliefs. Second, many verses emphasize freedom of belief, such as there is no compulsion in religion, or in verse 8 of chapter 16, it says Allah does not forbid you from dealing with kindness and justice with those who did not make war against you on account of religion and did not expel you, expel you from your homes. Indeed, Allah loves the just. And third, Quran is the uh, only divine scripture that respects and mentions the prophets who came before it, honoring Moses and Jesus, and validates their followers. For example, in a verse of Holy Quran, it has been mentioned, indeed the believers, Jews, Christians, and whoever believe in Allah and the last day, and did righteousness, will have the reward with their Lord. Or in verse 3 of chapter 3, it says, He has sent down upon you the book in truth, confirming what was before it. And he admits the Torah and the Bible. Uh, many thanks. So uh, does this perspective have any historical basis in the behavior and biography of the prophets? Yes. For example, in the Constitution of Medina, which was a treaty between the Prophet and the Jews, it is stated in Article 16, the religion of the Jews is for themselves, and the religion of the Muslim is for themselves. And in Article 25, it is stated, both Muslims and Jews should interact mercifully with each other. Uh, thank you. So do you have any other points you would like to mention? It should be expressed that religious war is a myth. Probably all conflicts of beliefs have had roots in cultural, ideological, or socio-economic clashes. Salafism and fundamentalism among Muslims have also been the result of hostile encounters and collisions between modernity and Islamic societies in Asia. Some Western researchers and scholars 
such as Karel Ernest, have also mentioned this point. Based on Islamic teachings, I pray for peace and peaceful coexistence among all human beings, regardless of their religion or belief. Thank you so much for your time and consideration. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to have Dr. Simai Saraf in this episode. Like always, hope you enjoyed this episode. Stay safe and well.